is uh, Professor Daniel Erasmus. This is my first lecture, and um, it's going to just be an introduction to what will take place over the next 10 weeks, where I'm going to be your uh, primary lecturer and professor. And I wanted to just make sure that uh, you have all read what is required of you from a reading perspective. In other words, you've scanned what reading is required from you and uh, that you have some sort of a, an indication of what I'm expecting from you by way of assignments and, um, and, and other sundry matters. So first and foremost, your primary um, textbook for this particular course is the IBFD, uh, Tax Risk Management from Risk to Opportunity. I have a hard copy of the book. Uh, it, it's expensive, but it is available to you at no charge from the library, uh, which uh, if you go through to the library and uh, Emmanuel Ayeni, who is assisting with the, the management of this particular course, will be able to show you how to access the I, uh, IBFD library. And under their electronic books, this tax risk management book actually is there. To make it easier for you, I am going to download the appropriate chapters that I'm expecting you to read in preparation for this particular course. So that's your primary, that's your primary textbook. You don't need to buy it. You will simply be able to access it free of charge through the IBFD portal of the Thomas Jefferson School of Law Library. Then the second book that I am making reference to is uh, one of the books authored by me called Tax Intelligence, The Seven Habitual Tax Mis Mistakes Made by Companies. Again, this book is available for purchase uh, from Amazon, but I have actually made an electronic copy of the book available to you free of charge. So you'll be able to download that from the, um, from the course site. Then, uh, in addition to that, I make reference... Uh, at my uh, my blog is Erasmus. So Erasmus is, is my last name, E-R-A-S-M-U-S, Erasmus on tax, one word, Erasmus on tax.com. And if you go to that site, I regularly post interesting articles, uh, surveys, information, and on the landing page, you're actually able to, uh, after entering your name and contact details, you'll be able to download what is a summary of the seven habitual tax mistakes that companies make. This is really more of a, a marketing document, but it does summarize, it, uh, summarize the principles quite well. Um, so the, the marketing stuff at the end, you don't really need to, to take account of. That's not necessary for you to know about in this course. So in addition, in addition to uh, those particular reading materials, I'm also going to be asking you to access certain documents off the internet. And so just to explain to you the rationale behind that, one of the documents that you will have to download is a, a fairly lengthy document called Hun Hungarian Tax Policies and Procedures on Tax Risk Management. This is really an example document of an extensive tax risk management process we did for a very large multinational corporation based in Hungary. I've obviously taken out their particular um, specific uh, uh, references and you'll see there's references to Hungarian law and uh, all of which is, is not applicable to you in this course. But it, it is a good document for you to get to know because two of your assignments are going to be off this document. The, um, the first assignment you're going to do is really short uh, questions and answers, but the second and third assignment is going to revolve around coming up with your own tax risk management report. So I want you to be able to take the information that you're learning about, and I want you to be able to apply it in a practical manner. So this document is given to you an example. And so Assignment one, as I said, is going to be short answers and questions. Assignment two, you're going to be asked to create a skeleton of this document. And so you can pick, a, you can pick an anonymous client. You can pick a company that you know. You can pick your own business um, as the subject matter of the tax risk management report that you're going to compile. I don't really mind who you pick, but you need, 
you can create an imaginary entity and you're going to be asked to compile a skeleton tax risk management document as assignment one and then as assignment two we are going to assume that this company has operations in South Africa. So I want to take you away from America. We're going to assume that this company has operations in South Africa. And I'm going to get you to look at some of the South African-based legislation just to give you an idea and a feeling for what legislation is out there in the international arena that you would typically need to uh, look at and come to terms with in compiling a proper tax risk management study. Now, a tax risk management study for a company is a very, very extensive broad document, and even more so for a group of companies. So what we're going to do is we're specifically going to focus on a very topical event that's taking place, and some of you may have already studied it, and some of you are going to study it. We're going to look at transfer pricing in South Africa as the subject matter of our tax risk management document. So this is not meant to be a transfer pricing course, but transfer pricing is going to make up a big component of your tax risk management process, uh, particularly for a multinational enterprise. So we're going to go into South Africa, review some of their legislation, and that legislation which we are reviewing will be just the same type of legislation that you would review in other countries. And I come back to this document where you'll see we've reviewed certain Hungarian legislation in compiling this document in, in order to identify some of the emerging tax risks and how to go about dealing with them. And so that will become uh, more evident as we, go, as we go through the course. So the information which you're going to be asked to go and find and look at, um, so just to give, you, to give you some sort of um, indication, and you can start looking for it now if you like, uh, one of the documents, um, I've sort of only got an old, uh, I'm trying to look for my newer copy, but one of the documents is the South African Constitution. And of course, it's available on the internet. And you'll see that I've made reference to certain specific provisions. And the reason why I say the Constitution is important is because it really drives the approach to tax risk management in South Africa, which will become clear from my lectures. So when we start looking at other countries like Nigeria or Kenya or the European Union countries, we're also going to want to know what the constitution of, for instance, the European Union, um, I refer to the constitution, but it's, it's really the, um, the document that forms the basis of the European Union. And so, you know, whatever country or region we're looking at, we're looking for something similar to a constitution so that we understand what our fundamental rights are as taxpayers because that's going to influence the way in which we will effectively approach any type of tax risk management process, depending on what happens. So um, I'm just looking at my other computer here, uh, just to get a list of the other reading materials. Then the other, the other important document we're going to look at is the, is the Vienna Convention. The Vienna Convention uh, which deals with the interpretation and the application of tax treaties between various nation states. And so when we're dealing with tax risk management and the international arena, it is very important that we um, understand what the Vienna Convention says. So you can go and search the Vienna Convention, and there are specific uh, sections that I have asked you to look at. Then I've asked you to go and find a double tax treaty between South Africa and any other country that it has a treaty with. It's got treaties with approximately 70 other countries. Don't choose the, the USA treaty. Take some, some other treaty. Take one of the African countries. Um, and I want you to, and you'll find those treaties again by going to Google or to Bing. Uh, a useful site is the SARS site. SARS stands for the South African Revenue Service. SARS dot gov g o v dot z a sars s a r s dot gov dot z a and there you'll be able to find a list of those double tax treaties download one of them and i've asked you to look at the associated enterprises clause and the exchange of information clause those clause numbers change in the different treaties so i haven't given you a clause number to go and look for but you'll find the one that talks about associated enterprises and the um, exchange of information. 
Then I've asked you to go and look for a bilateral investment treaty between the USA and Mozambique. And you will see that in your uh, syllabus there is a link uh, to uncatadxi.org. So I'm not going to read out the whole reference to you. You can find it. If you go to that reference, you, you will be able to see how you find different bilateral investment treaties, which are important also from a broader tax risk management perspective. And then I've asked you then to go and look for the South African Tax Administration Act of 2001. So this is a new piece of legislation. I'm just reaching down here to get a, a copy of mine, which uh, I've lectured off um, many, many times in the last two years. And uh, so it's got lots of annotations in it. But um, that's, the, um, that's, the, that's what it will look like when you find it. Um, if you have difficulty find it, finding it, please let your course manager know well in advance. Um, but, you know, you need to be able to find these materials on the Internet. And you'll see that, um, that it is uh, Act, it's Act number 28 of 2011, Tax Administration Act of 2011. And this governs the interactions between taxpayers and the South African Revenue Service. Very important piece of legislation. And you'll find similar pieces of legislation and similar provisions in other countries, which really helps you determine how to approach your tax risk management process, depending on where you find yourself in it. So that's going to be used as an example. And then I've asked you to look up the South African Income Tax Act of 1962, which is the current Income Tax Act, and specifically to read Section 31 that deals with transfer pricing in South Africa. Uh, then we go on and read certain chapters out of the books I've shown you, but I wanted to just give you kind of a, a, a broad basis overview of what is expected of you uh, to read so that you can start finding some of these materials on the internet. And, um, and then, uh, you know, if you have difficulty finding those materials, we can, then, uh, we can then assist you in doing so. So that is all for now on this first introductory lecture. Uh, the next lecture, we'll delve a little bit into some of the specific reading that you are supposed to do in preparation for the first lecture. My lectures with you, as has become customary in this course, is not to sit and lecture you. I am going to be interacting with you as students. I'm going to expect that you've read uh, your materials, and I'm going to be asking you to comment and come in and share with fellow students uh, your views on what it is that you've read. It's not going to be me lecturing you, so please be prepared, otherwise you're going to find that um, it's going to be somewhat embarrassing and, and it's not going to be conducive to, to the learning that we're trying to promote. That's all for this lecture. Until next time, goodbye.